as you know, if you watch my wife and I's videos, we are very much focused on and fascinated with the person and personal nature of our God. Because we are finding out more and more since we became free from the bondage of religion that life as a creative being is truly about finding out who that person is and exploring the depths of his heart and all that. I mean, it's something I believe will go on for eternity for those of us who are his children. And it starts right here and now. So we're in awe of this on a regular basis. Not that we think we're special beyond anyone else. Everyone's special in his eyes. It's just amazing finding out how special you are. That's why we get the way we do about these things. Whereas things that used to be ordinary and everyday maybe, or more veiled or you know, seeing through a, gla a glass darkly and all that type of stuff. Now we're starting to see things a little bit clearer. And we understand it's still just a fragment, just a tip of the iceberg. But relatively speaking to what we knew before and were taught before, it's amazing. It's just utterly eye-opening. As you see the heart of your God and how much he loves you, it changes your perspective on everything. We're just we're reading the scriptures different all the time. So that said, I want to read the scripture from chapter 18 of, of Genesis a very famous chapter and I'm going to pick up in chapter or verse 16 but it's amazing because God comes to visit Abraham and has a meal with him God in the person of himself or one God and two of his angels because it says very clearly that God does things well I'll just read that what how he does things in in Isaiah 44 verse 26 a it says who confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers. Messengers there is the exact same word for angels used everywhere else in the Old Testament. It's the same word. So, he comes and visits Abraham and he's going to do something. He's going to investigate something. The results of the investigation he doesn't know yet. But he, like I say, he comes... He, our God, comes to Abraham, him, and these two angels. But it doesn't really delineate between the two, except at certain points. So, like, let me just start off. Verse 16. And the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. So the men did not include Abraham. The men was God and those two angels. That's the men it's speaking of. Just so you know, just make this clear. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? Now I believe this is something the Lord communicated to the angels. Because like I said in that other scripture, he does things after the counsel of his angels. He he counsels with them. That's clear. And now for confirmation on this, it's a lot of scripture. And I do have a video on this. But you can read in 1 Kings 22 and 2 Chronicles 18. There's a one story told in both of those versions. It's virtually the same. Whichever one you want to read. About God seeking counsel from his angels regarding King Ahab. And it shows clearly that he asked the angels what he should do about a certain situation. And the angels contributed. And God went with one of those angels' decisions. With one of his suggestions, I should say. So, when he says this, And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Obviously, he wasn't talking to Abraham. He was talking to them. He was talking to the angels because he was considering it. Should I do this? Should I hide from him? And then he says, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. It's like he's just bouncing off them, so to speak. Like, if you've ever been in a conversation with someone where you wanted some input, but it turns out the input was your own. What you mostly need to hear was your voice saying something to someone. And he said, oh, should I do this or should I do that? And before they even answered, you got your answer because you said it out loud. You said, what should I do? Because... There is no account here of them responding, but he makes a decision right after that. I'll just read it in the flow again, starting in 17. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, 
seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. So see, he knows what's going to happen in the general, but should I hide this from him? For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. So I can say, he's just thinking out, thinking out loud, so to speak, between him and the angels. And then it says, and the Lord said, in verse 20. Why does it have to start that all over again? He was already speaking. Because he was speaking, his, he was thinking his thoughts, so to speak. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end, like Jeremiah said. So he's, he's saying it in counsel with his angels. And then in verse 20, he says out loud, and the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me. And if not, I will know. So this is the decision. He formulated the decision and he speaks it to Abraham. Now Abraham knows why the Lord is there. Because if you read earlier in this chapter, he just said, well, can I make you a meal before you're on your way? That's all Abraham knew. So it was no supernatural. I mean, any communication from God is supernatural. I understand that. But not supernatural and telekinetically from mind to mind. He just said it. He just said, this is what I'm going to do. He thought about it. He considered it. Then he decided. Again, verse 20. And the Lord said, because the city of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. And because their sin is very grievous. I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it. Which has come unto me. And if not... I will know. You see that pattern? Just like from the garden. He brought the animals to Adam to see what he would name them. He hears the cries from Sodom and Gomorrah. He hears the chaos. He hears the wailing. He hears all the things going on down there. Which I imagine any righteous cries was probably mostly from Lot and his family. Because they were the only righteous ones. Uh, or at least close to it. They weren't engaging in all the Sodom and Gomorrah type behavior that was going on down there. As you'll see if you read later. In this, I'm only going to read more and more verse in this chapter. But if you see what's going on in there, God was hearing about this, but he needed to investigate to find out what's happening down there. So, he says that to Abraham. And then in verse 22 it says, And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet with the Lord. So the writer, Moses, is conveying to us now is a separation of the men the men went down from thence and went towards Sodom they were just given the orders the Lord said I'm gonna go do this so you see what I'm saying is when when an angel does something it is tantamount not virtual it's literally the Lord doing it whether it's beholding something there is eyes or taking action they are his hands they are his feet they do what what he is doing God does things that way he lets people do things with him he lets angels do with things with him he loves the things he makes why wouldn't he do that so if you can just picture this in your mind there's the four of them standing there and he makes this command that he's gonna go down and see what happens and then the two angels walk away he just said I'm gonna do this I'm gonna go investigate and find out if it's true or not and they walk away and the Lord is standing there himself in the form of this this man with Abraham check this out this is from Exodus 23 and 20 because I want to drive home this point I'm making if it sounds outlandish to you or, or inaccurate in any way in a a Exodus chapter 23 starting in verse 20 it says the Lord speaks and this is in the New King James Version just so you know behold I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. Hmm. But if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. Isn't that amazing? 
it basically says the same thing in most of the other translations, King James, all the popular ones. I think that's a pretty accurate translation. But you see how he switches there. He says, but if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak. That's what people understood back then. They understood when they were in the presence of an angel, they were in the presence of God. And there's different accounts where they thought they were going to die once they experienced that. Samson's parents experienced that. They saw the angel of God and they thought, well, I'm going to die now. Because that's what everyone believed. You can't be in the presence of God and see God and live. So God did something to make it possible for us to see him and not die. Just kind of like when he came here as Jesus. That was fully God. I know people don't want to believe that. They want to say it's a third, a part, a half, a messenger, a prophet, a poet, or whatever. But no, that was God. That was your God. That's the magnificence of it. That's the glory of it. That your God would do that. And he did this in the Old Testament by showing us that he gets things done and he includes his creation in it. That's all it is. It's him doing it and he does it with them. Just like he does things with you now or he wants to. He wants to do things with you. It's him doing it. The two of you doing it together. And in this case, he did it through the angels. Now, I just thought that was beautiful scripture because it shows that the two key components there, he will not pardon your transgressions for my name is in him. So that shows the power of the name. Again, going to the meaning of the name, not the pronunciation of it. But what is the meaning of that name? He is my savior. He is my life. He is my God. He is my father. He is my everything. So his name was in that angel. So it's, it's the same as him being there. That's why he would he would alternate. But if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, it's synonymous. It's saying the same thing. Like Jesus would say that all the time. Things like that. I don't do anything except I see him do it first. He wasn't giving an account of two people doing the same thing twice. He was just telling us who he was. He was getting it done. In Jesus name. Amen.